Welcome to The Public's Health, the show that puts you, the public, into public health. It's brought to you by Alameda County Public Health Department Media Productions. Here's what you're about to see. Studies show that even young students struggle with decisions that affect their sexual health. See how the Making Proud Choices program prepares and empowers youth to deal with these issues as they arise. Are the students in your home up to date on their pertussis vaccine? Watch how our health department supported the schools in getting students immunized. A collaboration between our health department STD experts and the creative minds at Oakland's Youth Uprising had surprising results in this youth-generated video. Don't miss hearing directly from the public about their health concerns in on-the-street interviews. We know water is important to health, but do the young people in our schools recognize this importance? And what can be done to raise their awareness? Up first, you'll hear answers from nutrition experts and a school nurse. Stay tuned. Seventy percent of the human brain is made up of water, and the same percentage of the earth is covered with it. The importance of drinking enough water is as old as thirst. Today, clean fresh water access is still a concern. This series illustrates Alameda County Public Health Department efforts to ensure that the young in our schools have access to clean, fresh water. The water campaign uh, got started when we first arrived on campus at the school-based health center. We interviewed the nurses to see what health problems or situations that they were observing on campus with their students. At every campus, it was, became common that some of the, con the conditions they were seeing were related to dehydration. They usually come in the door, they're having a headache, they don't feel good, they're low on energy. Sometimes even if I, if I get them to smile, I see that they don't have any mucus in their mouth. Working with the nurses, we decided that uh, one issue that we should address is pr the promotion of water. Water is an important part of our body. As I said, 60% of our body is water. Therefore, if we don't drink water, our body suffers. Our brain is our biggest organ. It requires a lot of water, and our body requires a lot of water. This is a big campus. Our children are walking around all day long from class to class, plus they have almost 45 minutes of PE. And if they don't drink water after PE or before PE, they're more likely to have muscle cramps. We're currently working with nine of the new school-based health centers in the Oakland Unified School District. Seven of them are at middle school, and two of them are at the high school level. Now it's both a state mandate, but also a federal mandate that free water be provided for every child. To make sure that we are following the law, Oakland Unified School District is doing numerous things. We are doing everything from providing free bottled water to our students at the high school level. We also have drinking fountains that are available in the cafeterias. And we've also provided what I call got coolers, which the things that you would see on the soccer sidelines and providing cups for students. But then we're also looking at when we have construction projects, putting in what we're calling hydration stations that would be cool running water that students would be able to refill either a reusable cup or a reusable bottle to get their free drinking water. Knowing that the tap water was safe, we wanted to get the word out to the students uh, that uh, the water in the fountains was safe to drink. Uh, we did this by uh, creating posters. Uh, we actually worked with the art department at one of the high schools to create posters that were promoting tap water. Tap water is important for OUSD students because, for several reasons. I think it's a great beverage alternative. So many of our students get stuck in the soda rut when so 
soda is full of sugar, it's full of caffeine, and we have a wonderful beverage that we just turn on the faucet and out it comes. The average child should be drinking eight eight ounce glasses of water a day. This is an eight ounce glass of water. These children need to drink eight of these a day, and that seems like a lot, but when you have an active student, you need to have this much water. And we're actually doing campaigns with Alameda County Public Health Department to have water bottle designs and then also to provide water bottles to those sites where Alameda County Public Health Department is doing intervention around tap water. We also are working to promote tap water and just drinking water in general on campus with uh, special events. Uh, we have uh, water tables that we're setting up. Uh, if there's a health fair, we will have a water promotion table. Um, we will provide um, drinking water from uh, urns and uh, we have a water wheel that you spin the wheel and you get to um, find out more information about drinking water and hydration and the health of, of drinking water. The way that we'll be able to determine success is if the stigma associated with tap water starts to go away and students realize what a wonderful tasting water we have coming right out of our tap and not rely on bottled water. And they just feel much better. If, if just with a little bit more water in their life. Um, I feel for adults the most important public health issue is the ability to access um, medical, uh, medical facilities and um, be able to go see the doctor when necessary without worrying about like an enormous like medical bill or the fact that they'll be turned away. There's no ready access for low-income people. Um, it's very hard to find free or low-cost um, medical help for people. I speak to this, my son is unemployed and his health is not as it should be and we've just discovered the Malta Clinic down at the Cathedral of Christ the Light, which is free. He had an injury. The most important public health issues are dental and eye care because from what I know that is really hard to get even going to a county hospital it's hard to get dental where they do more than just pull your teeth out and also eye, eye care it's like almost unheard of I mean I'm 38 years old and I've been trying to get my glasses since I was 25. And I believe a lot of the medical issues stem from teeth. They rather pull them out than fix them. And I think that is really, you know, a lot of, I, it's myself, I like to hold on to mine. They're mine. Why should I have to pay for some, you know, when I can I have mine and, and they can be fixed? Affordable health care, especially when it comes to being able to afford the, the health care for the preventive things that just feel basic. You know, screening, just being able to actually get those in at the time that they need it, not like three years later because my insurance has collapsed and I can't afford to go in. I think people don't realize how much stress really affects their health. I mean, as far as headaches and how um, they eat and how they respond with their family, a lot of that has to do with um, also cardiovascular health and how much they're willing to do things proactively to better their health. I think stress has a lot to do with that. You know, generally people should be more aware that they're coughing or sneezing, and they don't really have the um, common sense to, you know, pop into a, uh, the corner of their sleeve. Health coverage, um, actually having a health plan that um, isn't too expensive and that covers all your needs and um, will protect you when you have some serious illness and not put you in lots and lots of debt. I think the most important public health issues for everybody is sanitation. I'm very mad because my girlfriend wants me to use a condom. Well, These sixth to... graders from Oakland's Alliance oh, Academy okay. Middle School like are role-playing the pros and cons of using a condom. I just it's a lesson they learned in a class you called Make Your Own Proud Choices. It's about like they teach you about how 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 you get like diseases and how important it is to use a condom. 
This message is being taught to sixth graders in nearly every middle school within Oakland's Unified okay. School District. The goal really of Making Proud Choices is to provide students with the tools they'll need to make responsible decisions throughout their lives. It's, it's empowering because it gives them the knowledge that they can speak up. Okay. If they don't like something that's going on in the school, they can rally together and have a voice and be heard. And so that's one of the things about the role play. It gives them the confidence to say, hey, you know what, I can say, put on a condom. I'm sexy and I know it. If you think sixth grade is too early for this type of talk, think again. Children are exposed to sex everywhere. In music, on the internet, and even on phones. Why not give them the tools, give them the education and the right knowledge about sex and how to prevent teen pregnancy, you know, the right way. There was one, he said, condoms didn't feel very good. The program doesn't encourage sexual activity. As Director of Health and Wellness for Oakland Unified School District, Joanna Locke says, students need to have this information early so they can make safe choices for themselves. Protect yourself against what? Um, STDs, HIV. We know that we have students with sexually transmitted infections. We know that we have students who um, have become pregnant. And we have some students in both junior high and high school that um, are pregnant and parenting teens. And for those very reasons, the sex talk in this program is very direct about how pregnancy can occur. Having sex vaginally, which means penis in the vagina, okay? A lot of kids aren't hearing it from their parents. You know, it's still kind of taboo. And a few parents have even expressed their nervousness about the program. I can see that they're kind of tense. They're like, well, who are you and why are you here to teach my child about this? Despite their uncertainty, a majority of parents are embracing the Making Proud Choices curriculum. We want the conversation to start with you. We want you to be at ease. Um, we've also had parents that say, oh, I don't know how to talk to my kid about this. So I'm so glad that you're here and you're going to be teaching them this. But, but I heard about your ex-girlfriend. Ex I heard she got some diseases. Um, I don't want to catch this, those. This, those are just rumors. <laughs> Despite the laughs and giggles, the message is sinking in. And we know from early program data that after going through Making Proud Choices, students are able to name twice the number of activities that can lead to pregnancy. Now that we're bringing this information to the kids, yeah, it may be that they're 11, 12, and 13, but think about it, it gives them much more time to really arm themselves with knowledge and to be able to make these, these proud choices for their future. By the end of the program in 2015, more than 10,000 Oakland students will have the knowledge they need to make prouder and smarter choices in their lives. A reception was held at the end of 2011 in appreciation of some workers whose year-long devotion reaped fantastic results. These Alameda County Health Care and School District staff along with other community partners, performed valiantly to ensure that all grades 7 through 12 students were up to date with TDEP. The event was hosted by Alameda County Public Health Department Immunization Assistance Project. After achieving record high TDEP vaccination rates, these guardians of children's health were able to take a well-deserved breather at the reception and receive some recognition too. They will gear up again this year to provide boosters for all students entering seventh grade. Now here's Rini Cheney Cohen with more. In 2010, Governor Schwarzenegger signed into law AB 354 in response to the distressing whooping cough or pertussis epidemic in California. The new law specified that all California students entering grades 7 through 12 provide proof to their schools that they were up to date with Tdap, the booster shot for tetanus, whooping cough, and diphtheria. The mantra was, no shots, no school. It was heartening to see how serious and committed the nurses were from the very beginning. Today, we wanted to take the time to thank all of the schools of Alameda County for their hard work and fantastic results. Many districts and schools' compliance rate 
was 97 to 98 percent or higher. Next year's task of making sure that all students entering seventh grade are up to date with a pertussis booster will be simpler and we are sure that Alameda County Schools will do an excellent job once again. The total school population is about 9,200 students. We did a lot of work, so we're 100%. Worked with our administrators to kind of make it happen. Of course, the support from our local health department in running our clinics was uh, priceless. We, we felt your support, and we appreciate all that you gave us as well. Well, thank you. We definitely felt gracious that you were there in our hour of need, I tell you. <laughs>75% of male students and 55% of female students involved in date rape have been drinking or using drugs. All right, we're going to bring out our next yes. guest. We're going to bring out Jerome. Come on, Jerome. Ain't that a shame My tears feel like rain So, 
Jerome, what brings you to the show? Well, uh, me and her, we did our thing. <laughs> her over here. We did our oh, thing, yeah, too. Did that too. <laughs> that was the first, so I know I ain't give nobody. Well, <laughs> we're going to find out right now. I have the results. I have everyone's results in my hand. <laughs> Philip, your results are here. And you tested positive for chlamydia. <gasps> Dang. Oh my oh. god. Oh. You should have knew that. I she oh. oh. positive for oh. chlamydia. Oh. Oh. I do oh. 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 Brooklyn? Yes. Go oh, home. Please let her know. Results are here as well. Mm -hmm. Please let her know. And you tested positive for Gonna <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jerome. <laughs> you are going as well. Yes, I love And like... your tests were negative. Negative. Go ahead, man. Let them know. Right so there. Look at the camera. Right there. <laughs> your test came back. Go ahead. Positive of HIV. What? One fourth of all STI cases occur in youth, 18 and under. Anyone who is having unprotected sex is at risk of having an STI or HIV. It's a fact, no matter who you are or where you live. Some STIs are curable and some are not. Someone may be infected and show no symptoms, so they pass the disease to their sex partner. Use condoms or other barriers to protect yourself. Know the facts. So you don't find yourself sane. Ain't that a shame? Affected of me in the sense it hadn't this time around because I'm working and I have insurance. But I, but in the past I didn't have insurance and I wasn't able to keep up those regular yearly exams. And right now I'm thankful. Just <laughs> I am thankful for insurance. How do you impacted my health with the stress issues? I, I'm borderline high blood pressure now. Um, it has gotten a little bit of depression in there. You know, uh, it's just a lot of stress because it's you don't know where your next meal is going to come from, if you're going to make the rent, and it's hard finding a job right now. I believe there are more people riding public transit, which I ride, and I've had more colds this year than I've ever had, so I think it's because there's just more people on public transit, and that's probably an effect of the economy. I'm here today in Oakland uh, for this free clinic. And I haven't seen a doctor or any regular treatment for the past four or five years. So that impact from losing a job and then trying to get another job where I have to wait uh, has impacted me very much. Even with the, uh, the COBRA uh, care, that's too expensive for others to even maintain after they have lost their jobs. Oh, mine, I lost my insurance in 2008. I haven't been able to see a doctor since then. Um, this is my first chance to be able to be seen by a physician and a dentist. So this is a blessing in disguise. The economy, as far as um, insurance, they've cut out so much. The cut specs and all of that. That's where I think the economy is, has really have cheated a lot of our, our our citizens. I mean, you know, we're of this we're this great nation. I don't think I think we should be able to get as you as citizens, we should be able to obtain and be able to get a lot of those benefits that's not open to us. From the law standpoint of the type of work I do, um, people are not spending the money, so I am not getting the number of clientele I would if people were, you know, spending the money. A lot of clients are out of work, so I've had to um, reduce prices. And so as a result of that, I am paying more for private health insurance. And I just don't know, I don't know where I would start if I had to access, like, public health, you know? Um, I don't know if I would, I don't know if I would get the same benefits and at the same time, you know, kind of in a roundabout way, it's, it affects my 
uh, financial status too. I try to, actually I've been eating more healthfully <laughs> because I eat out less and cook more, but at the same time, um, it's uh, also a matter of like looking at like what prescriptions can I afford this month kind of thing. Because um, even as a young person I still have to get, I have medications I have to pay for and um, also worrying about friends who don't have coverage at all and seeing them struggle with um, like should I go to the doctor and pay the copay when I really can't afford it this month? Should I hold off this doctor's visit even though I'm really feeling sick and can't go to work? So um, personally not so much but I'm seeing a lot of other people really affected by it. I actually am receiving food stamps because I had my son, I graduated from college and I turned 24 all in the same year. So 2011 was a huge year for me. And so being a nurse, like graduating with a bachelor's degree in nursing, like I'm college educated, but because of the economy, I have no job because either nurses are working up all the full-time hours, nurses that should be retiring can't retire, nurses that would have you know, their partner's income to also rely on, they're losing their jobs, so they have to work more hours as nurses. And so for all the new graduates, there's no jobs left. Thanks for watching The Public's Health. Please see our YouTube page at HealthTube AC, our Facebook page at ACPHD Media Productions, the ACPHD website at www.acphd.org, or call for information at 888-604-INFO. See you next time.